Hi there, and welcome to ACT on Mental Health, where we're learning acceptance and commitment therapy, or ACT, and how to improve life mindfully using ACT. My name is Sean Hardy, and I'm a licensed mental health counselor here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. A few years ago, I discovered ACT while in graduate school and gravitated to it as a therapy that works unlike any other therapeutic approach. ACT combines science, philosophy, and spirituality in a unique and powerful way to help people get unstuck and move forward toward a life that matters. What I like most about ACT is that it's an experiential form of therapy where we come to learn by way of experience, whether that's through metaphors or guided exercises. Now, chances are that if you're struggling with anxiety, you've tried many things, including therapy, self-help books, positive thinking, religious practices, not to mention all of the negative things you may have used to manage anxiety. While each of these positive approaches have their place, anxiety is kind of like Jason from the Halloween horror movies that always seems to come back no matter what you throw at it. If you'd like a primer that goes more in depth on what anxiety is and some exposure related techniques, I have a video that explains these in greater details here. This series, ACT for Anxiety, is going to follow the six core processes of ACT and has an accompanying resource that has much more resources and worksheets to practice on your own. These are available on my website, seanhardy.com, for free. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe. These tell YouTube that this is something that others need to see and helps this channel reach others who may want to learn ACT, too. Acceptance and commitment therapy is an evidence-based approach. It comes from a scientific model that builds on other cognitive and behavioral therapies. It approaches thoughts and feelings as events that can sometimes get in the way of living the life that we value. We often get tied up in our worries and thoughts. Although some of these things our mind tells us can be helpful, others can be distressing, like I'm such a failure or everybody's staring at me which leaves us feeling down, angry, or anxious. Very often, we try to control our difficult thoughts and feelings. This could be trying not to think about them, withdrawing from social situations, drinking more than might be good for our health, distractions, self-harm, and many more. These strategies may appear to work in the short term. However, how many of these solutions help in the long term? If you find yourself using such strategies, you may also find yourself having to keep going back to them repeatedly, feeling stuck in this cycle. The fact is that some of our coping strategies can add to our problems or create entirely new ones. What we try as a way of managing difficult thoughts, memories, images, and feelings can be unworkable. For example, an individual who thinks that everybody is staring at them may try to control this by avoiding going out to being around people. Although on the surface, this could look like a good strategy to avoid that difficult thought, it could lead to social isolation in the long run. In ACT, the aim is not to change the content of distressing thoughts or to reduce difficult feelings. Rather, it is to help you take a step back and see your thoughts and feelings as just that, even those that are hard to have or that you know to be true. By increasing your willingness to experience distressing thoughts and feelings, you will be able to live with them more effectively. This change in perspective from avoidance to willingness can help you begin to live your life in a way that is important to you. Let's get to know our own experience. Am I normal? All of us will have an idea of what normal looks like. For most, it will contain some elements of happiness, success, and a sense that most things are under our control and that we can take on most of what life throws at us. However, sometimes we might feel we are struggling to keep things together and everyone else around us is able to achieve this relatively easy. We want to be normal, but no matter how hard we try, we don't seem to measure up to others. Yet despite our sense that the world appears to be living while we're simply going through the motions, the following figures show that this doesn't quite add up. Anxiety disorders affect approximately 40 million Americans, making them the most common mental health condition in the United States, according to Cleveland Clinic. Can we gain anything from these statistics? What this demonstrates is that you are not alone in your struggle. 
Everybody at some point in their life will face some form of emotional pain to some degree. Therefore, is it safe to say that suffering is a part of being normal? Most of us don't want the difficult thoughts and feelings we have, and we will try our very best to either avoid them or get rid of them. The most logical thing to do is to try to change them. Our brains automatically work this way, don't they? They identify the problems and the thinking of ways to overcome them. It automatically goes into that problem-solving mode. Our mind is a powerful tool that can predict, evaluate, and plan. And this helps us to overcome complex problems that we face in our environment. When our car breaks down, for example, this is an external problem, and so our external solutions work. When dealing with our internal experiences, such as thoughts and feelings, do you think it works the same way? Are internal struggles the same as external ones? Some attempts to control difficult internal experiences are not 100% successful. Watching this video may be another attempt to try and control your internal struggles. You may have been struggling with difficult thoughts and feelings for a while now. You probably tried a lot of different ways and invested time and energy in trying to tackle your problems. But what if trying to control your problems does not work? Maybe the logical, reasonable strategies we try to use to overcome our problems are simply unworkable. Stephen Hayes, the founder of ACT, likens this to being trapped in quicksand. In this instance, the most logical thing to do would be to try and escape. However, with quicksand, the more that you struggle, the quicker you start to sink. As you try to move your arms and legs to escape, you find yourself sinking deeper and deeper. Maybe sometimes our attempts to control our internal experiences are similar to struggling in quicksand. The more that we fight with our difficult thoughts and try to fix our internal problems, the more stuck that we get. If this is happening to you, maybe you need to try a different approach. Rather than trying to struggle with the sand, if we stay still, lie flat, and make contact with the sand as much as we can so our weight is more evenly distributed, we would be less likely to sink. Now in this sense, it's not about struggling to get out, it's about making more contact with the sand. This is counterintuitive and not something in the moment that we'd be thinking of, yet it's the exact thing that will work in this situation. Now you may be thinking, doesn't that mean that I should just give up then? Because if trying to fix things doesn't work, what's left? First, let's examine what could happen if we continue on the path of trying to avoid or control our problems. Then we'll explore the alternative, acceptance and commitment to your values. Imagine that your life is like sailing a small boat. During your life, you have picked up the skills necessary to sail your boat and have a sense of where you're taking it. At some point, you learn that waves may wash over the bow, and you find yourself with wet feet. You've also learned that when there's water around your feet, you use a baler to remove the water. So you learned about the baler, but when it's not needed, it has been put away in a locker. At some point along your journey, waves have come over your boat, and now there's water in the bottom. So you start to do the sensible and logical thing, get rid of the water. You have been using that baler a lot, sometimes quickly, sometimes carefully, sometimes desperately. In your experience, have you managed to get rid of the water yet? All this time that you have been bailing, what has happened to the direction and progress your boat has been making? Is it fair to say that you have been bailing more than you've been sailing this boat? The promise of bailing is this. Once you get rid of the water, then you'll get this boat back on track and start sailing where you want to go. But what if you were able to let go of needing to get rid of the water, instead begin to look up from the bailing and choose the direction you want to take? The question to ask yourself is this. Would you rather have a boat with only a little water in the bottom, but it's drifting and you are not choosing the direction you sail? Or would you want a boat with water in the bottom, maybe so much water that you could wonder how it's still afloat, but you are still taking this boat, however slowly, in the direction that you most want to go. We will explore what direction means later in this series. This involves living toward your values, the things that are important to you, and setting achievable goals along the way.
By now, you may have noticed that some of the ideas mentioned in this video may not have been what you were expecting. You may have been expecting strategies and tips on how to feel good and be positive. However, this series is not about that. This series is about changing your relationship with your thoughts and feelings, a perspective shift. Some of the concepts may seem odd at first. Some of the ideas may be exact opposite of what you would typically try. All I ask is that you're willing to give it a try. Now, at the end of each video, I'd like to give you something to practice during the week. For this week, reflect on how much time you've spent bailing the water out of your boat. What things do you do to get rid of your difficulties? What would it mean to stop dealing with this water? Spend this week noticing when anxiety or other difficult feelings arise and watch how you react to them. Do you take your hands off the wheel and start dealing with it again? Don't change anything just yet. Just notice. On my website is a diary that will help you to note down what you did in response to your anxiety or other feelings this week. Familiarize yourself with this now and take a few minutes, maybe at the end of each day, to fill it in. This will give you a record of how the week went. Again, this is not about trying to change anything just yet. It's about noticing what you do when faced with difficult feelings. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and feel free to leave a comment or share with someone that may benefit. Remember your journey towards a more purposeful and mindful life begins with a single click.